Today we're going to be watching a video that claims atheists have a god, and it's apparently a female god, so we're going to watch this video together and find out exactly what this guy means by the female atheist god. Human mind cannot live without God. What do you mean by that? I think I'm still here. That sounds odd. It's a very interesting concept. Our mind has a dependence, an innate dependence, on a God figure. How do you prove that exactly? How does the mind have an innate dependence on a God figure? I don't have any gods, I just kind of like vibe, you know? What am I talking about? When you look back, man always finds God, or the other way around, God finds man. So you, the atheist, and when you look back at the history of atheism, the atheist always had to have a God figure, because the mind cannot work. I'm not sure exactly what he means by this whole thing, but let's let's keep it going, and... I just want to say, like, a brief word here about what he's saying, because this is some weird stuff, isn't it? Um, religion has existed for quite a long time. Religion is, uh, I think, something that evolved out of necessity for community building. Religion kept communities together, I'd say, before the Age of Empires, and even during the Age of Empires, but it was mostly useful before that, and now it has taken on very different dimensions, become a worldwide thing, that doesn't hold humans together as much as, say, borders. Borders are a big thing that holds humans together these days. Nation states, for example. Um, ethnicity, that sort of thing. And um, religion doesn't seem to have a purpose anymore and seems to only do more harm. It divides people in, frankly, dangerous ways. If you think countries divide people in dangerous ways, religion is even worse than that. But let's continue and see if he has something more interesting to say, because I'm sure he does. I want to find out about this atheist god, and I'm sure you do too. Our human nature, so to say, depends on God character, God behavior, God organization, and God control. No idea what any of this means so far. So how did the atheist find God? The atheist gave him a name. Okay? And you've heard the name, but you didn't realize what it was. You heard Mother Nature. Okay, so that's not exactly where I was expecting this to go. Just kidding, this is exactly where I was expecting it to go. Mother Nature is not my God. I just happen to exist within nature. I don't think I've ever said Mother Nature. I think that's kind of a silly term. It's very spiritual kind of New Agey stuff. But, uh, you know, whatever. Let's see what he has to say. Who is Mother Nature? Who is this character? This comes about due to the dependence of man on God. So they had to fill the space. And to fill the space, they created... Mother Nature. Well, no, nature has always existed. To call it Mother Nature is only to recognize that we would not be here without nature, that we are a part of nature. It's not as if people who say Mother Nature are worshipping nature. You're talking about more like pantheism, which is the idea that everything collectively in this universe, between the natural laws and every atom in it, are essentially, on the whole, what you would call God. Einstein held this view. Spinoza seemed to hold this view, many philosophers have held this view, and pantheism, I guess you could say, is sort of atheism, let's be honest, but pantheism is a very distinct belief system, and I would not consider myself a pantheist, although I don't really have a problem with the idea of pantheism, I don't really have a problem with the way they describe the universe, because it's still very much a naturalistic sort of thing, however, again, Mother Nature is not a term I would use, and it's also not like a term that means you worship nature. It means you know you come from nature. 
If you say Mother Earth, what you mean is, this planet spawned us, this planet created us. We are here because of this planet. So you see, it's in his nature. Okay? When things happen, the person who believes in God says, it's in God's nature. God decided that this happens. God's but we don't see the hand of God reaching down to orchestrate things. The only thing we see in this universe, as far as we can tell, is nature, natural laws. We don't see the hand of God intervening anywhere in the universe. We have never observed or witnessed a, a supernatural event or happening. There have been no miracles that we have seen happening. And this is a very big problem if you're claiming that God essentially intervenes in humanity. Because it seems like if he's around, he does not. Which means he would be more of a deist kind of God that just created the universe and was like, Okay, I'm out of here. Later, guys. Good luck with that. Set it up this way. God chose this way. Now, the atheist wants to deny that. So they create this fictional character because of their dependence. Because they still depend on God. Human interaction, human thoughts. Human consciousness depends on God. There has to be a character. So they How do you prove that exactly? I mean, I was an atheist before I really knew much of anything about the world. I am what you would call a natural atheist. The kind of person described by Pascal of Pascal's Wager as somebody who just doesn't really believe in this stuff naturally. And so from a young age, when people had mentioned God as an explanation for things, as they did frequently, because I come from a fundamentalist family, I was very sheltered, actually. I just said, something about that doesn't sound right. The stories they're telling me don't sound right. And I can't put my finger on it, but I don't believe this at all. Of course, later on, I found out about evolution, the Big Bang, stuff like science, you know. And then I had an explanation for why exactly all of this God stuff sounded a little bit suspicious. That does not mean I worship evolution or the Big Bang. I merely acknowledge that they are facts, that they are things that happen that religion cannot account for. I guess unless you're a Catholic or some strains of Islam or Judaism. But really, that's just adding stories to what we know happened. We know the Big Bang happened. We know evolution happened. And the fact that some religions accept these things doesn't mean that the things they put on top of it, the religious stories, have any value or worth or meaning. Of course, they do to the people involved, and I'm not about to impugn them for that. However, as far as we can tell, nothing supernatural happens in this universe. They create Mother Nature. They give it a female, make it female, for obvious reasons. Because if they make it male, then they believe the people of the religions would immediately recognize that that's God. There are uh, religions that have female gods. This is not like a new concept, the idea that there could be female gods. Um, I'm pretty sure the Roman religion, the Greek religion had some. I'm pretty sure Hinduism has some. So this is not like an uncommon thing. But we have to ask, when you're talking about God, your God, the Christian God, what does it mean to be male? What is the role of male in like a biological sense? Males and females on planet Earth partner and have children. That is the, I guess, meaning of male and female. Now, I am reducing it very harshly here. I don't want to exclude gay people or trans people, so I'm talking just in sheer biological terms, evolutionarily speaking, what the roles of male and female are in an evolutionary sense. Um, of course, there are roles for gay people and trans people in an evolutionary sense, but I want to reduce it to, like, bare bones, male, female, and children. Because... The Bible and books like it describe God as a male, our Father who art in heaven, that sort of thing. What does it mean to be male, according to these people? Well, a male would have a penis and balls. And what are those for? Well, the balls are for uh, reproduction. So is the penis in that case. I know you didn't want this impromptu sex ed ca uh, court. Wow, God, I'm messing up all over the place. Huh? This uh, sex ed class, I suppose I should say. But we're going there anyway. And the other thing that the penis is used for is expelling uh, waste. Why does God need those? Does God drink? Does God uh, reproduce with people? I mean, he did with Mary, apparently, but very different way. Not like the traditional sort of like sex kind of way. So you have to ask, what does it mean for God to be male? And I also question this in relation to Jesus. Jesus is described as the son of God. What is a son? 
A son is a form of relationship. How does one become a son? A son is born or adopted. That's pretty much the only ways you become a son. How does a person have a son? Well, they reproduce or they adopt. So what does it mean for Jesus to be the Son of God? That implies God had to reproduce or adopt Jesus. And yet we are told that Jesus was always there with God, that they were all, that Jesus, God, and the Holy Spirit were three parts of the same being that were always there. So it's hard to say, well, this is a son, isn't it? And the reason I'm going through all of this is just to point out how silly a lot of this mythos is. When you break it down to its bare bones parts, it sounds quite ridiculous indeed. The religions typically call God, you know, he, not because God has any sex, because God comes before sex. Sex is created. This is creation. Male, female, that's creation after the Big Bang. So what does it mean for God to be male, then, if God doesn't have what we call male parts? What does it mean for God to be male? Is he a trans man? Is he genderless? What exactly is God in this sense? I would really like to know. God comes before that. In this, you know, Christianity, they call God Father, Abba. So, you name God Mother Nature to confuse that, but to preserve the role and capacity in the making of choices. So they want to preserve that role, that capacity of God as the figure that makes choices. They name God Mother, Mother Nature. Uh, Mother Nature does not make choices per se. Mother Nature is not a person. Mother Nature is not a deity. Mother Nature is not a figure. I mean, in some, I guess, New Age religions, sure. But for the most part, when people say Mother Nature, they're just referring to the way nature works. And nature does not have a plan or agency or anything like that. Nature abides by certain laws and rules, and those laws and rules produced humanity and other species. That's all we're saying there. It's, it's not like there is an actual figure named Mother Earth. It's just a planet we live on, operating on natural laws, producing things via those natural laws. So you hear them say, natural selection. So, oh, it's nature that selects. It's a natural disaster. It's nature that destroyed. They are replacing that. Now, they can't just say, oh, random disaster. Well, yes, I mean, these things are natural. We don't see the hand of God coming down to cause, let's say, the 2004 Indian tsunami that killed 250,000 people. We don't see the hand of God in that. We don't see the hand of God in natural selection either, and, and credit where credit is due. This man is a Christian, but he seems to believe that evolution is real, even though he says weird things about it sometimes, and he does seem to think the Big Bang really happened, so we'll give him some credit there. I don't know if he's Catholic or what, but good job there at least. But just adding natural to things doesn't mean that nature has agency and is deliberately causing these things. When we say something is a natural event, what we mean is it's something that just happened based on the laws of the universe that there was no way to get around. Because nobody will relate with that. They themselves can't relate with that. They can't see random selection. So they say natural selection. Nature did this. Nature did that. Mother nature is in control. That's God. We do not see God intervening in these things. As I've said many times before in this video and many others, we just do not see the hand of God coming down to cause these things. We see the world working through natural laws that we understand pretty well. You see, but they want to deny God that role. They don't want to give it that name, so they say Mother Nature. But they do realize that the mind needs to appreciate that it takes a high intelligence to make the selections that are assumedly random. So when you talk of natural selection, and you talk about the design of your hand. It does not take uh, any like designer to design these things. I and mean, the designs of humanity are very inefficient indeed. I mean, you know, I like this example quite a lot because it points out something very interesting. Um, you have blind spots in both eyes, and the reason you have blind spots both eyes is because your optic nerve connects at a certain spot, and there are no cones there to receive light. So you have blind spots, and what happens is uh, your brain corrects for that by painting in the surrounding area as part of that area. You can test this online. It's very fascinating stuff. 
Some animals, as far as I'm aware, like cephalopods, do not have that limitation. That seems like not the best design to me. Uh, there are plenty of other examples of what you would call shoddy design in humanity. So if humanity is designed, the designer was drunk. You talk about the design of your eye. You talk of the fact that man is here so beautifully structured. If you want more about the eye and how it evolved, read Richard Dawkins. Uh, he has a book called The Greatest Show on Earth, The Evidence for Evolution. Fantastic book. I have my disagreements with Richard Dawkins, but I will always, always, always promote that book for people who want to understand how evolution works. And for that matter, how uh, the evolution of the eye specifically works. Animals are there. You don't have the crazies. You have errors, dinosaurs. But now there's nothing so large anymore. It's not like it couldn't exist, but it doesn't exist in our way. Creating a perfect path for us. It's not like we killed the dinosaurs. But why don't we have these monsters anymore? Well, you see, there was this gigantic asteroid uh, that hit uh, what you would call Mexico today and killed off most of the dinosaurs. Not all of them. Some of them evolved into birds over time. And birds are still pretty good predators. I mean, have you ever seen a hawk? Jesus Christ, those things are crazy. They'll steal your tiny dog. Um, but dinosaurs did not all die out then. They just changed forms. I mean, if you want to look at it like uh, technically, you could sort of call crocodiles and, and things like that uh, monitor lizards. All, they're almost dinosaurs, aren't they? Like, honestly, they're almost dinosaurs. Um, and they, they go back to before uh, the asteroid that hit the Earth. And so it, it cleared a path unintentionally. It did not do that on purpose. The, the asteroid did not have a goal in mind when hitting the planet. Neither did Mother Nature. It's just that that one event opened up a little pathway for some tiny mammals to become the dominant species on Earth. And it took a while, but it happened. And that's just how it works sometimes, apparently. So there's some perfect format that made the world perfect for us. And not too perfect for the dinosaurs, I gotta say. They got the short end of the stick on that one. To be that ultimate race, that ultimate species, it's perfect. Selections happened. Okay? Selections happened. So you know, the atheist knows those selections are perfect. But they're really not. I mean, what are you calling perfect exactly? It was a happy accident for us, and a very unhappy accident for the dinosaurs. And uh, it cleared a path for humans to evolve into the intelligent monsters we are. Because let's be clear, humans are kind of monsters. I mean, we're good to each other in general, but, like, look at our history. Everywhere humans showed up on Earth, there was a mass extinction caused by us hunting down all the large animals. And, uh, you know, other things like bringing cats everywhere, and cats becoming an absolute menace, destroying entire environments. I love cats, by the way. I don't care if they're little monsters. Uh, so what you call perfect is actually super destructive. Perfection, in this case, is not very perfect at all. It's very dangerous, actually, especially if you are another species on this planet, because we are just causing the, a mass extinction like the world has never known before. The rate at which species are going extinct now is greater than the rates through any extinction in history. We are really doing a bad job of being perfect. If this is perfection, I, I wonder what humans would look like if we were imperfect. Uh, the guy who coined the word Big Bang, the scientist, coined the word Big Bang. Was that uh, Fred Hoyle, I think? Um, yeah, the Big Bang. No, I mean, did Fred Hoyle coin the term? I forget. It's not that important. But, you know, I don't know where he's going with this, but he does seem to think the Big Bang is real. So let's see where he goes with this one. Mathematician said the probability of random events creating a single living cell is the probability of a Boeing 707 being in a junkyard, torn up in pieces, and wind blowing it together into an aeroplane. Yes, but the problem here is that uh, a Boeing 747 is a human design, so it's very hard for nature to approximate human designs. Now, there is a chance that such a thing could happen if given enough time. It's extraordinarily unlikely to ever happen, but it could, you know. Uh, but how nature works is just very different than how humans work. Um, we find the ingredients of life everywhere we look. We find water, we find uh, oxygen, we find carbon, we find amino acids. Everywhere we look, we find these things. And let's be clear about another thing here. 
our uh, galaxy has something like, uh, you know, a couple hundred billion stars. And let's say each star has about five planets, so about a trillion planets in this galaxy. It's probably more, but let's say a trillion planets in this galaxy. There's anywhere from like 500 billion to two trillion galaxies in the observable universe. The actual universe, beyond what we can see, is probably somewhere around 250 times the size of that. We are talking gargantuan numbers here. And from what we can tell, the average rate of planets in their habitable zones is something like 1 in 100. Um, so 1 in 100 of 1 trillion is already a lot. That's already, you know, 10 billion planets that have, uh, that are in the habitable zones of their star and have the conditions for life, at least in that one regard. Water, as we know, is common. We find water pretty much everywhere we look. I mean, there's water on Mars. There's water on the moon. There's water on other moons. I mean, there's water everywhere. So the idea that these habitable planets have water, it's probably pretty common. So that's 10 billion in this one galaxy. There are uh, approximately, you know, 500 billion to 2 trillion galaxies. So that's 500 billion to 2 trillion times 10 billion. And then you have to send that times like, what, 250 or so to capture the total number of galaxies in the whole universe, not just the observable universe. That is a, a whole lot of chances for life to emerge. And it could be so rare that this is the only planet in the entire universe, beyond the observable universe, even where life arose. But I think that's jumping the gun just a little bit. I think that eventually we will find that life, in some form or another, is practically everywhere. Um, we will see. It may not be the case. We will see. But we are the only ones we know of now. But that the ingredients are there. The ingredients are everywhere in the cosmos so you have to have selection that selection has to be very very perfect and organized and then to deny god of being the one who made that selection but to still attribute intelligence to the selection we don't attribute intelligence to selection natural selection happens because there's like an evolutionary arms race between species the species most well adapted survive and the ones that don't die out it really is that simple you're overthinking it my guy Lector. They name her Mother Nature. So oh, nature selected those qualities to lead up to perfect man. Nature selects things to happen so the world didn't destroy while it was being formed, and so we are here. Nature. So this is the nature of the atheists, uh, agnostics. Uh, they believe in God. Apparently, according to what I can see here, uh, Mother Nature is originally a Greco-Roman personification. Um, let's see Let's see if we can go a little bit further with that. It's a personification of nature that focuses on the life-giving and nurturing aspects of nature by embodying it in the form of a mother or mother goddess. Uh, European concept traditions. Uh, so, Mother Gaia is the earliest known instance of the concept of Earth as a mother, 13th or 12th century B.C. It goes on to the Greek myth of the seasons, ancient Rome, post-classical concepts. The pre-Socratic philosophers abstracted the entirety of the phenomenon of the word as a singular, physis, and this was inherited by Aristotle. Um, very interesting stuff there. Medieval Christian thinkers did not see nature of it as inclusive of everything, but they thought it had been created by God. Sorry if I'm messing some of this up here. Uh, my mouth is kind of dry. Earth lay below the unchanging heavens and moon. Nature lay somewhere in the center, with agents above her and below her. Therefore, Mother Nature became only a personification, not a goddess. So indeed, Mother Nature did begin as a goddess in Greco-Roman culture, and Christians then turned Mother Nature into a personification and not a deity. So if you want to blame atheists for uh, Mother Nature, you're going in the wrong direction. It was actually uh, your people, the Christians, that uh, invented the whole Mother Nature thing as we conceive of it today. So good job there, my guy. I suspected it was something like that. I just had to look it up to be sure. The only thing they do is they change the name that they used to refer to God, to Mother Nature, and still bow down and expect perfect laws from nature. I don't bow down and I don't expect perfect anything from nature. Nature is a mess. Uh, the universe does not care about us. Mother Nature does not care about us. There is nothing out there that cares about us except for us. And even then, not so much a lot of the time. Never a law that, there's never a faulty law. Not once. They've not seen a single faulty law. The ex what does it mean to be a faulty law if we're talking about natural laws? I mean, how can a law be faulty? Evolution is a messy process. 
Um, the, the creation of elements scattered throughout our bodies is a messy process. I mean, the, the matter in my right hand here is uh, completely different than the matter in my left hand. The matter in this hand is a result of many different stars going supernova. And so is this one. We don't know where all this stuff came from. We just know that supernovas, a bunch of them, created the matter that became, you know, my hands, your hands, everybody's hands. A different matter from different stars in this hand than this one. So we know that to be a fact, and it's a messy, messy process. They calculate, they invest on finding, and bet on finding a next perfect law and a next perfect law, like laws of gravity, stuff like that. And we do find them, in fact. They are everywhere. I mean, we find these things all the time. Where we used to blame Zeus for thunderstorms or Poseidon for sea problems, uh, we don't blame those things anymore because we have scientific explanation through natural laws. The same reason, of course, I don't believe in your God. I mean, these days, when I was a kid, I just didn't like buy it. But now that I know about science, science is the main reason I could not believe in gods. I just don't see them jiving too well with science. That controls the Earth because they can count on... Nature's laws to be perfect. So the atheist has this thing, they just need God. I would encourage my guy here to read another book. Uh, I know that he's very into the one book, but there are other books. And I would encourage he read another book. So read another book, my guy. If you watch this uh, debate between Richard Dawkins, one of the common atheist prophets, call it prophets because they make money, kind of profit, profit. Ah, smart pun there, my guy. Atheist prophets. You know, I have made some money from YouTube, so I guess I am officially an atheist prophet. So we can just go ahead and add that to the litany of other things he's called me, like atheist preacher, anti-goddess, just getting all kinds of titles from this guy. Uh, and Ben Stein, an amazing debate. And after Ben Stein... Ben Stein is a right-wing economist and a complete joke. He did this documentary called Expelled, No Intelligence Allowed, which advocated intelligent design being in schools. And to get the interviews, he misled people into what his stance was and interviewed people with the same questions over and over until they got frustrated and gave him answers that looked like they backed up his cause. He probably watched a video like that, not a debate proper, because if it were a debate proper... Richard Dawkins would absolutely destroy Ben Stein. That's Dawkins, you know, challenges Dawkins with the facts. Dawkins is like, yes, he does recognize that in the perfect nature of existence, DNA, biochemistry, that these things are next to impossible by random events, by mother nature. So he says he does recognize that there might be an alien footprint on man. I know exactly uh, the thing he's talking about. So it is the expelled no intelligence allowed clip, which I have covered before. What happens in that clip is this. Ben Stein pushes Dawkins and asks if it's possible that uh, there could be some kind of designer out there. And Dawkins postulates, well, I suppose aliens could have designed uh, humanity or whatever. It's unlikely, but I suppose they could have. And of course, the Christians just run with this and say, wow, Dawkins believes aliens created humanity. But no, Dawkins was saying that if there were a designer, you could say feasibly it would be aliens. However, those aliens would have themselves had to come from natural processes, not too dissimilar from evolution as we understand it now. But of course, these people can't be fair at all. So Ben Stein himself misrepresented Dawkins. And now uh, everybody who sees that video does the same thing. Dawkins was not claiming there is any design. He said, as a hypothetical, it works better than God. That's about it. He believes in aliens. That's his link to God. But he leaves it at the aliens because he knows these things. A mother nature that's not uh, an intelligent being cannot do them. Okay, anyway, so he's wrong, and um, I hate that this guy is being misled by, by these people, these charlatans like Ben Stein, but what can you do? People are going to be misled, and they're going to let it happen a lot of the time. It is hard to find good things when your algorithms are ruined by complete garbage, like the Ben Stein expelled stuff, which I have covered before, by the way. So anyway, um, I hope I gave a sufficient response to the idea that atheists have a god and that the god is Mother Nature, because we do not, and Mother Nature is not ours. 
In fact, as I mentioned before, Mother Nature was originally a Greco-Roman god that eventually the Christians took and made into a personification and removed from godhood. Uh, and of course, this guy attributes that to atheists. But we had nothing to do with that, and we still don't. And I don't even use the term Mother Nature usually. I mean, I probably have a few times, but I don't really use it because it's kind of a silly term. I guess it makes sense, but it's more of like a new agey kind of woo-woo thing that I don't really like. So I hope you enjoyed this video for whatever that's worth, and uh, I hope you have a great day or whatever.